Hi, this is Marcy with Earth Sky. We asked astronomer Rick Feinberg about protecting your eyes during both the partial and total solar eclipse on April 8th. So you'll hear about the April 8th eclipse as being a total eclipse, and it is, but only for people who are in the narrow path of the moon's dark shadow, which crosses the Pacific Ocean and then sweeps across Mexico, enters the U.S. in southwest Texas, and then arcs up toward New England into Maine, and then finally into eastern Canada. That path is only about 115 miles wide. And if you're in it, you will see a total eclipse. But if you're not in it, you will only get a partial eclipse. And the difference between a total eclipse and a partial eclipse uh, can't be exaggerated. Uh, they're, they're two different animals. Uh, it's only during a total eclipse, and you can only see it in the path of totality, that you get to see the sun's corona, that you will see uh, sunrise and sunset colors all the way around the horizon, uh, that it will get so dark that stars and planets come out. Um, so you really, if you can be in the path of totality, you should get into the path. Outside the path, you have only a partial solar eclipse. Um, it's kind of interesting. You watch the moon move across the sun's face, but it never fully covers it. And so it never gets really dark and you don't get to see the corona and you don't get to see any of the other phenomena associated with a total solar eclipse. So I like to say all of North America is having a solar eclipse on April 8th, but only a small fraction, maybe 10% of the of the people on the continent are going to have the opportunity to see a total eclipse. Everybody else will see only a partial one. And if you are outside the path of totality, there will be no time when it is safe to look at the sun without eye protection. You have to use a safe solar viewer to look at the sun at all times when all you're having is a partial eclipse. Now, even in the path of totality, um, the eclipse is partial for more than an hour as the moon slowly covers the sun. Then you get totality, which lasts at most four and a half minutes and across much of the path, three and a half minutes or so. Uh, and then you have another hour or so while the moon is moving off the sun. So a total solar eclipse is the, uh, is the climax in the middle of a solar eclipse, which has partial phases before and after totality. And 95% Partial solar eclipse is interesting because if you're looking at it through a safe viewer, you will see a very thin crescent sun. And it will get a little bit dark, but really no darker than on an overcast day. And the nature of the light, the quality of the light will change. The sky may change from blue to a little bit silvery or maybe even purplish. But then the moon will move off the sun again and you will never have gotten totality. So uh, 95% isn't good enough. 99% isn't good enough. Um, if you can get into the path, do it because there won't be another total solar eclipse that is widely visible in North America until 2045. So that's 21 years from now. And if you were to pick any random spot on the planet and just park yourself there and wait for a total solar eclipse to happen, on average, you'd have to wait three or 400 years. So Although total solar eclipses are not rare somewhere on Earth, because they occur every year or two years somewhere on Earth, it's very rare to have one come to you. What about watching the total solar eclipse? My advice to people who are about to experience a total solar eclipse is that you have to keep your eye protection, whether it's eclipse glasses or handheld solar viewers, you have to keep that eye protection on throughout the initial partial phase, which lasts more than an hour, while the moon is slowly gobbling up more and more of the sun. And the safest way to know when to take off the glasses is very simple. Watch until you can't see anything through them and you notice that it has suddenly gotten really dark. Then take them off and you can look at the totally eclipsed sun it's only about as bright as the full moon. It's just as safe to look at. Uh, the solar corona is a magnificent sight. Um, you know, it stretches out beyond the rim of the 
moon's dark silhouette. Uh, the, the moon is velvety black. The corona is a very unusual, strange kind of white uh, with streamers and loops and wisps and arches and all kinds of things. Uh, and that's the star of the show during totality. And then how do you know when to put your solar viewers back on? It's pretty easy. Uh, and this applies if you're not looking through telescopes or binoculars, just with your eyes and a solar viewer. At the end of totality, the receding limb of the moon will uncover first a little bead of bright sunlight shining through one of the deep valleys on the moon's limb. And when that bead appears, it suddenly gets light out and you see this incredible sight in the sky. It looks like a diamond ring. This bead of sunlight is a brilliant diamond, and you still can see the corona around the entire rest of the moon silhouette. That looks like a ring, so you have this diamond ring effect. As soon as you've seen that for a second or two, you'll start to see more and more of the sun uncovered. It's way too bright. Put your solar filters back on at that point. Here's other tips and ways to safely view the partial phases of the solar eclipse. If you know, what do you do if you don't have a safe solar viewer? It doesn't mean you have to miss the eclipse. Um, you need a safe solar viewer if you want to look directly at the sun during the partial phases of the eclipse. They're not useful during totality because totality is only about as bright as the full moon. And again, you don't need protection to look at the full moon. So you can look without the filters during totality if you're in the path. But at all other times, you need viewers that are specially made for looking at the sun if you want to look directly at it. But there are other ways to look too. Uh, first of all, the partial phases aren't that riveting, okay? So if you're looking at a partial eclipse, uh, while it's fun to look directly at it, if you don't have any filters, um, you can use an indirect method. The simplest one, if you live somewhere where there are trees that have leaves on them, and in early April, that's not everywhere yet, um, if you just look at the shadow of the tree on the ground, you'll notice that there are uh, lots of little images of the solar crescent on the ground. Uh, these are projected by the little pinhole spaces between the leaves. Uh, so this is a phenomenon called pinhole projection. And you can use a tree to do it, or you can just cross the fingers of your hands like this, making little spaces between your fingers, your crossed fingers. You put the sun at your back and look at the shadow of your hand on the ground and you'll see little crescent suns during the partial phases. If you have a colander, grab a colander from your kitchen, take it outside. Again, with the sun at your back, just hold the colander out and all the little holes in it will project crescent images of the sun during the partial phases. So you can watch a partial eclipse without even looking directly at the sun. Maybe it's not as much fun, but if you don't have filters, you can still watch. 